Boris, and thank you for being here. Thanks. I'm, I'm really honored to be here and also have the opportunity to, to talk about uh, this project. I used to indicate the stories behind the Thai faces. This is a story of a Thai face, Barmer Katap. Uh, but it's also the story of uh, some women uh, and a very amazing experience, for, at least for me. Type design, I think it's an activity that can go beyond the simple creation of new forms to supply an increasingly saturated market of typefaces, of new typefaces. As a specialized activity, type design can contribute to a more inclusive dialogue within the framework of our global society. Typecraft Initiative is a project where type design and letter drawing aim to give visibility to the pop popular expression that is manifested through crafts in India. It started some years ago, and uh, it's a project developed together with Ishan Koshla, a graphic design based in New Delhi, India, Shirley Badnagar, an Indian artist, Sol Matas, a type designer uh, based in Berlin, and me, I'm a type designer based both in Barcelona and the Pyrenees Mountains. With the support of local NGOs, the project combines the concepts of craftsmanship and design, organizing type design workshops that involves communities of artisans in order to link their skills doing the craft in the process of creating and drawing letters. Tradition and craft legacy are the source of inspiration on, in a letter drawing process that concludes with the production of a digital typeface. In this process, the process of designing a typeface, craft people, mainly craft women, are involved. A strategic aspect of the project is to use these workshops as a way to, to share design methodologies with local communities with the intention of providing resources into the traditional craft processes. At the same time, the typefaces that are the result from this collaborative design process are also a way to visualize and celebrate the local craft and the people behind these crafts. Letter drawing is used as a way to introduce some of the design methodologies into the creative process. Design thinking methods such as ideation, sketching, and prototyping are introduced in the work process in order to provide a more efficient approach into the craft practices. Also, this helps the artisans to reflect on their own work, and maybe they can figure out new possibilities for the craft. Another important aspect of these workshops is community building. It's not only about making typefaces, but sharing expertise in design with a craft community and providing a spirit of sharing and collaboration. They learn from each other, and a confidence atmosphere is created during the workshop sessions. And of course, uh, we also learn a lot from these women, not only about the craft work, but also about their, the local communities, about their daily lives and their way of living. To work directly with the artists and communities and tribal artists uh, means that we have to to travel, we have to live for a while in rural areas, we have to get in touch with local communities and get used to local conditions, and sometimes these conditions are not very comfortable. In February 2020, just a few weeks before the COVID lo lockdown, together with Ishan Koshla and Shirley Bandagar, we did a type design workshop in the middle of the Rajasthan desert in, in India. The type design workshop took place in a very small village near the city of Barmer, with the aim of starting a collaborative process of designing a new phone, a, a phone that was based uh, on local textile crafts. The Barmer region is known for its textile activity in the applique and patchwork textile techniques where traditional these techniques, these, um, these textile techniques are used, were used uh, in the tents as a decorative uh, issue for the tents of nomadic, nomadic communities in the desert, that were living in the desert. The applique textile technique, as you can see in this picture, 
uses traditional botanical motifs, such as, uh, in this case, is the tree of life. They use motifs of animals. They use motifs mainly of flowers, bushes, uh, leaves, etc. At the workshop, we started with a presentation of ourselves and the Typecraft project. And afterwards, we were also introduced to the local craft textile techniques by the local artisans. So we could learn from each other and understand about the local craft and what they do in the daily life. Then we discussed about how we could do some letters together. It was important to demonstrate from the early beginning mutual respect with, uh, and break any sort of hierarchy during the design process. It was important also to empathize with the local communities and show true respect for the culture and way of living. Language, as you may suppose, was really a problem since these artisans didn't speak English, and some of them could only speak in their own dialect. But it was funny, but at that point, body language appeared to be very useful to communicate with each other. And since Barmer applique and patchwork techniques uh, were based on cutouts, as a warm-up, we started the workshop together with women, cutting all newspapers as a way to draw and sketch. Because women were quite uh, unexperienced in drawing and they were quite afraid of, of drawing, so the cutouts were a, a perfect way to a sketch letter. So they sketched by cutting with scissors and paper. Then this was done without following any rules or being limited by the conventions of the Latin alphabet. We wanted to provide enough freedom in order that they could have the chance to express themselves and come up with their own designs, their own ideas, through all this sketching process. And of course, this, this gave the women a sense of authorship and improved their self-esteem. At the end of this stage, we got quite interesting results. This is such a selection of what we got. And of course, at this point, some compromises had to be introduced into the design process. So we had to make decisions in terms of type design. We had to introduce conventions. And this is one of the most challenging parts of the workshop, how to keep the original flavor, how to keep the original spirit of all these ideas, all these sketches that were previously done by all these craft women. So, yeah, we had to apply some technical restrictions, but uh, that had to do with legibility, that had to do with proportions, with the scale of letters, but trying to uh, be faithful with uh, the ideas that came out from the sketches. Since most women didn't know the Latin alphabet, we gave the letters of the alphabet, just uppercase letters in a small, read handwritten in a small cards, so they could figure out the shape of the letters. And uh, it was encouraging to see that among the group of 15 women, all but one of whom were illiterate, over the next few days of the workshop, they were able to recognize the letters of the alphabet, and some of them, some of them even learned to write their own names. Once the letters were completely drawn on rough paper, they were redrawn on a transparent tracing paper and transferred to a piece of black cloth with uh, doing some holes with a pin, following the pencil stroke outlines. Afterwards, using toothpaste, the drawings were transferred into the, into the piece of the, the black fabric, the black piece of, of cloth, and yeah, when the letters were visible on this piece of black cloth, they could be cut out and be prepared for the sewing process. In this workshop, craft women had the chance to make their own designs. So they were very happy to see the, those, in those letters their own ideas, uh, in these pieces of cloth, so they were very proud of it. And this, yeah, this was the final picture. We spent around 10 days with the craft women, and they were very happy to show some of the work that they had done during the, the workshop. 
Phone production is a separated part of the, of the process. It's a different stage that is done. It's done in our own design studios. And yeah, because when the workshop is over, the phone is what will remain from the whole process, from the whole experience. So, and here in the, digitation, in the digitization process, it's important to fix inconsistencies and simplify as much as possible the outlines in order to reduce the large amount of number of dots that we get when after we get, uh, have all this um, material scanned. Nevertheless, we don't intend to get a perfect shape since we prefer to get the flavor, uh, the taste of handmade drawings. And that's what I would say, the consistency of imperfection. That's what we want to achieve. The result is not intended to be fully commercial. Some phones are not fully complete. I mean that they don't have all the punctuation set, and maybe they don't have all the symbols, maybe they don't have uh, all the diacritics, for instance, since they were not done, they were not drawn by the craftswomen. But normally, fonts include the basic set in uppercase letters. And as you might suppose, uh, this is a non-profit project, so no money is get from this, only from phone licensing, so the money that we get from phone licensing is returned to the communities, and it's also used to support and self-finance the, pro the, the project. Yeah, this is a short video that summarizes the, the whole experience. There is some sound. Um, well, the sound is just the, 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 the background. There is no music. Mm -hmm. That's, ah, it's inside. Here. Yeah, it's inside. Uh, moment. Let's go. Shot outside of this. Sorry, moment. Let's go outside. Okay, now you have the sound. Can you go back to your slide? Yep. I was supposed to play. Yeah. It's a background sound, so it's not much important, but it can give you a yeah, put into the situation of the workshop. Yeah, I can sing, but I am very bad at singing. So, so that was the sketching process, and it was easy to to, to cut out papers than pieces of cloth. <laughs>
As a conclusion, I would say that Typecraft is not only about designing typefaces. This is not the important thing. I understand type design not only as an end in itself, but as a medium. Designing fonts is OK as a way to visualize the work done by all these communities to visualize the craft. But overall, it's the process of collaborative design developed together with these craft women that counts, that matters. To complete the circle, the digital typeface, the von Barmer Katab, developed with craft women in India, in Barmer, has been used to design educational material for schools in some places in, in India. Alphabet cloth panels were designed as a tool for literacy at schools. Kindergarten students, for example, use this, this sort of alphabet game to learn the letters. For students of uh, upper, upper classes, as one and two, they use these clothes for panels for making words, simple words, combining the, the letters. And in the elder classes, class five and six, they can make sentences or do crossword puzzles using intersections in a more complex way to use these, these panels. As type designers, we are used to think about typefaces as final products. But typefaces can be more than that. Typefaces, non necessary, can be considered as an end in itself, but as an, as an instrument, as an artifact, a medium for empowering communities and as a tool for transformation. Said it briefly, Typecraft is a way, or tries to be a way, to design typefaces while creating social values. Thank you very much for listening.